My name is Debra C. Wright. I'm not a scientist. I have no degree. But in observing the universe for the past 30 years, I think it's under a repelling force. I use repelling magnets to support my theory, but I have never said that gravity is magnetism. This is a solid force. This is a solid force. Newton said things pull, I say things push. Einstein said, there's no pull between bodies in space. They merely follow the path of least resistance through hills and valleys of curved space. This here's a valley. These are all magnets with the north poles up and south poles down. This here is a magnet with its north pole up and south pole down. It shows Einstein's theory of going through space. I want to show you Newton. Here's Newton through space. Point shows you, in my opinion, that if uh, things were a pull, they'd all come together. First, you have to have a theory. This is how it works. Then you build a model to prove the theory. I've done that, but I still call it a theory. How many people years ago, people with credentials, degrees, tried to build an airplane? How many of them? Many people. But who built the first airplane? The Wright brothers. Who were they? They didn't have a degree. People, people that, that's why they weren't accepted. They didn't have any degree. And they made it fly by logic and common sense. And strangely enough, I've been told by my folks that we are related to Orville and Wilbur Wright. Years ago, my little boy was six years old. He told me he didn't believe Newton. And 12 years later, I asked him why he didn't believe him. And he said he didn't think that a pull by the moon upon the earth could cause a tide in front facing the moon and a tide in back high tide and back away from the moon. And I listened to him, it made sense. So that's how I got started, which was September the 8th, 1968, which is almost 20, 30 years ago, I started my theory. And I haven't changed my mind since, that it's, gravity could be a push. I'm in about four or five different small magazines. I'm in, uh, you know, different places. I mean, I made some progress that way. Now, in, in the 1992 Old Global Sciences Congress, I was invited back again, which is very unusual that, that Dean Stoney ever invited anybody back twice, but he invited me back the second time. On the sixth day, we all went to a big hall, and we all had our exhibits placed around the hall. In come the Denver Post with a, a photographer and a reporter, and I watched them. And they finally came to me about the last one, and I showed them my tide model I'll be showing you after a while. They were about a minute every exhibit, about one minute. They spent more than 15 with me. All kind of questions, all kind of shots, all kind of stuff. And when they left, now most of these people at this, at this six-day conference are all PhDs. I'm, I'm, I don't have a degree of any kind. And they all rushed over and said, in the morning, you're going to have your picture and the model and the front page of the Denver Post. I said, don't you believe it. No editor is going to say that gravity's a push. There was nothing the next day. Well, the scientific community has been very, very uh, lax in, in checking it out. I, I've invited them my, to my museum, and uh, they don't seem like they want to see it. And uh, I've had a lot of negative reports about me in the paper. People that never saw me don't know what I said, and that's unfair. Well, for instance, I had, a, I had a fellow that was in the local paper. He used to write an article once a week about space. All he was doing was quoting things that, they, that, that Newton wrote, the rest of them wrote. That's all he was doing. And so one day I find in the paper, he got a whole page about me, how screwed up I am. So I wrote to him. And I said, I challenge you to go against me. Bring your models. He said, no. I don't have any models, but I'll take you on verbally. I said, no, you won't take me on verbally. You will take me on with models. Uh, the Department of Energy, J.S. Kane, told Senator Percy, my theory was worthless. I challenged them to go against me. They haven't, they haven't accepted my challenge. 
California Education Department wrote to the news media and said my, my theory was quackery and nonsense. I challenged them. They have never showed up. And so it goes on and on and on. This here was put out by the Vacaville paper, our neighbor town, and they gave me the whole page about my theory on the, on the theory of gravity. And then not one piece in there, in there only about me, nothing. Now, after, after they knew, got the article from the California Education Department that my theory was worthless and quackery, I got a call from a reporter in San Francisco from the Examiner. And she said, I got a report that you're, that they didn't think much of your theory. And I said, well, they got their opinion. They can do what they want to do. And the more she talked, and the less I defended myself, the more curious she got. She said, I'm going to come out and see you. So she came on out to see me. I took her around, and she said, this is fascinating. I'm going to send my photographer out tomorrow. So she sent her photographer out. He took 105 pictures, 35 free roll, 35 pictures to a row, 105 pictures. How many pictures do you suppose made the examiner? Zero. None. None. I got so frustrated, I guess the word is, I wrote 3,000 papers. Every paper was different. And every paper I thought was interesting. Maybe, maybe five, six, seven years ago, my birthday, I took the papers outside in the big barrel. I set them all on fire. I said, this is it. I'll take an ax to my models, break them up, and forget about this stuff. As I started to burn, I reached down and grabbed the top papers, and I pulled up 1,004. There's 2,000 papers I wrote. People will never know what I said. I will never tell them what I said. Would you like to tell us? No, nobody. I sent out 200 letters a month for probably eight years. And when you send out 200 letters a month, you're spending more than 100 bucks a month. I'm out 50,000 bucks. If you call that money, uh, making money, I made money then. But, I, but I'm not, I don't regret one thing. Your money used for something, and I used it on this. Well, this is what I think is gonna happen. I think they're waiting for me to die. And then some professor's gonna say it was his theory because he has a degree. I want to leave something behind to be studied and thought about. If all the writing I've done, you'll never find one sentence where it says I am right. You will find many sentences where I said I have a theory. And I, and I will tell you this, I can tell anybody else. You might even come out here and say you don't believe me. And that's your privilege. But I'll tell you one thing. Before you die, you will tell somebody about it because it's going to bug you. Thank <laughs> you.